morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, I'm going to be talking about a bunch of ways that you can earn your mount at level 40. Now, this goes from whether you want to be a tradesman and do profession work, or you just want to get out there and blast and grind out some mobs. That is another um, way that you can go about this. As well as the sort of difficulty it is going to be for the classes. Um, I've sort of made a ranking for what is easiest to the hardest classes to have 40 gold on by level 40. Or sorry, 90 gold by level 40 to afford that mount. Um, but... I really hope this is going to help you guys because there is a lot that goes into this and having your mount is probably the biggest step that you can do as well as it can be very beneficial for you um, to reach that goal at level 40. But before we get into the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Everything you guys do helps my channel grow, helps me get discovered, and helps me help as many people as possible, which is the entire point of my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I'm going to start off by talking about the classes and their difficulty for getting their mounts. Um, in Classic, there are eight classes. If you include Shaman and Paladin as separate, it becomes nine, but you can only have eight per faction. So anyway, let's get into it. So easiest is going to be Rogue and Mage, and then Paladin and Warlock. Paladin and Warlock, very self-explanatory. They get their level 40 mount as a spell for their Dreadsteed or their uh, Lightforged War Charger or whatever it's called. Um, and so that is super cheap for them. They just learn it like a spell at level 40, and they have to get the writing skill, but the writing skill, I think, is like 18 gold. So it's pretty easy. Every Paladin and Warlock will have those. Now, Rogue and Mage I put in the easy category because rogues, every rogue I see level 40 has their mount, and that is because they pickpocket every single humanoid that they encounter on their way 1 to 40. And while they're doing that, they're able to sort of accumulate wealth whether they're getting items that they vendor or just the raw silver slash gold from all the pickpockets. It is a very lucrative way to do it. And I've seen every rogue that I have encountered uh, have their mount, and that is probably why. Then mage, once you're level 40, you get a lot of uh, portals. Portal to Stormwind, Portal to Ironforge, if you're Horde, Portal to Orgrimmar, Portal to um, Undercity. And so those are really useful spells, as well as you can conjure some really good water for people. Um, you can conjure the level 35 water as well as the food so people will always be wanting to do that i mean on my priest the first thing i do is i log in and look for a mage that can make me the good water because it costs a lot of gold to buy this water from the vendor so you're trying to save it up and get it from a mage um and then obviously i tip them what, like 50 silver every time they hook me up with 120 um, so mages can definitely sell food and water. They can literally conjure money is what I like to refer to it as. Anyway, that's the easiest classes. Medium, I have warrior and hunter because they have a very high kill time. Like they can just keep going and kill and kill and kill mobs. Grinding it out is not too bad for them. Um, as well as they don't have too many spells that are essential for them to learn. They can just keep going, keep grinding. They can blast a lot of beasts or other things if they wanted to just to get that um, money earned so it's really really good to see that um, and like if you have skinning you can pair it up with that as well uh, but we'll definitely talk about that when we get into the mob grindings and professions stuff so the hardest is going to be druid priest and shaman these classes have low kill times as well as they have a ton of spells that they have to learn uh, Druid definitely takes the cake because it has the most um, for cat, for bear, for uh, just lunar spells as well as healing. Druid has a ton that it has to learn to uh, really utilize its class a bunch, but you can always, you know, choose not to do it. Priest just has a low kill time, a lot of mana, a lot of stuff, so Priest is pretty difficult to get the mount at, at level 40. And then Shaman, tons of totems and spells, and honestly, Shaman is just pretty difficult. Um, from what I've seen, it has some very interesting statistics in order to get it, as well as a lot of spells with the resto enhance and stuff that it has to learn. 
So anyway, that's it. just sort of the class breakdown. Let's talk about ways to do it. So if you choose the grinding mobs way, um, some of the best mobs are going to be turtles, jaguars, yetis. And these three creatures, um, there are level 30 to 40 spots for all of these. The best place for jaguars is going to be the Swamp of Sorrows. You can find a ton of them here. They drop a lot of high vendorable stackable items. So you can just sort of blast. This is an amazing place for Horde especially because they can just vendor right here. Not too sure if the Alliance has a lot of vendoring spots here. I'm pretty new to Alliance. But you can just clear your bags, stack all that stuff up, and you can sell it. Worst case, Alliance just comes over here to Darkshire to vendor those. Then next, there are uh, some decent turtle spots. These are tur the best turtles are here along Steam uh, Weedle Port. They are 40 to 45, so you can, if you're coming at level 40, fighting those 45 turtles can be pretty mu pretty pain. But these will definitely get you to your mount pretty quickly because they drop a lot of items and are really, really, all of these are really good if you have skinning as well because it will stack up and acquire that wealth. Um, and then yetis, you can go up here. You can actually start doing yetis at level 30. Um, they are going to be up here in the Alteric Mountains. There are a ton of yetis right here. These are 30 to 32. You can also come down here and farm the yetis at this cave. These are a little higher, but all of these yetis are skinnable and they drop decent items for you to sort of farm and blast out so next we're going to talk about sort of professions and how these impact your character so i want you guys to take a look here i'm going to open up my tsm and i just want to show you how much gold i have made from selling small silk packs so this was just on this character doing pure tailoring um, I made 200. I've made 287. I'm averaging 22 gold a day, and this is just pretty much selling, turning all my cloth that I get into bags. This isn't really servicing too many people. I will do that if they are asking and trade and stuff like that. But I am there always grinding it out, um, able to sort of make a decent amount of gold doing that. I've reinvested it into my professions, and my professions are almost 250 on my 46 hardcore priest with tailoring and chanting. I really like tailoring. Um, if you're really trying to make money, tailoring and skinning is the way, most efficient way to go for just grinding out that money. You get all the cloth that you get and leather, and you can turn the leather into some stuff, but usually you end up vendoring it. Um, once you're at heavy leather, you save the heavy leather, you're getting a lot of cloth from humanoids, and just turn all that cloth into the highest bag you can. I started with wool bags selling those. I got silk bags. I've sold every single one. I've even bought the heavy leather off the AH because I don't have skinning. And I've turned that into some serious profits. And then uh, mage weave bags profit a ton um, when you're doing this. Sometimes the bolts, it's 20 cloth to to get it so you can just look at stacks of cloth and you can see how much the bags are selling for sometimes the margins are 30 to 50 silver per bag right now um, and you just literally need the skill to do it and you can just go to the AH buy it a little initial investment all my bags have sold every time I've put them up there even silk and mage weave still are selling so if you are a tailor there are some great humanoid farms that you can do um, as well so I like to farm the wastewater people out here um, as well as you can farm some good silk people in the badlands at the Angor uh, fortress those are great dwarves to sort of blast you can also come here down to Agmon's end and farm trogs here in the badlands these are level 40 humanoid mobs what's great about humanoids is they also drop uh, raw silver and gold so it's really really um, good for you guys to sort of farm these out and get a lot with those and then universally some um everyone every character no matter what you can do you can actually fish and i would recommend fishing either um Eltric mountains at lord of mirror lake right here you just fish pools this is a great source of silk and mage weave bolts as well as 30 to 40 greens 
and these will allow you to do you can do this at about 175 fishing if you use uh, bright bubbles on your fishing pole that gives you plus 75 you can just come here and you'll pretty much be able to fish them every time as well as you can go to Stranglethorn Vale uh, and sort of fish this upper part of STV around this lake that I am highlighting here and near Gromgol. If you're lying, be careful, Gromgol. There are guards there that will hurt you a ton. But fishing, that's my route that I usually go on for solo southbound because there's no trading. It's really easy to do and every class can do it. There's no limit to fishing. Everyone can learn it. Everyone can fish as well as you'll get some nice well-fed food for your hardcore journey you know eight stam eight spirit doesn't seem like much but it might end up saving your life so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video um just definitely even if worse comes to worse you guys can uh even hold off on training spells so on my priest i stopped learning spells at 36 and i didn't learn more until i got my mount and i was level 44 and really started to acquire some wealth to train my spells so that was pretty uh, tough for me to do. It did start to suck around like 43 and 44. I probably waited too long and should have not continued my profession investment and definitely learned more spells. But, you know, just learning your core essential spells could be a route to go. And I'm talking like the ones that you use in your rotation. Everything else, while it might be helpful, it's not required to really blast here in Classic. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I really hope this helps you get your mount at level 40. If you have any methods, any questions, anything you'd like to add, definitely drop it down below in the comments, and I will do my best to get back to you. But until next time, I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day. And that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.